All right, let's continue our discussions around land graph. So in the last video, we kind of were getting started with land graph. So we started with this discussion that in land graph, generally we have a set of nodes and we kind of connect those nodes using edges. Now this nodes, we can also replace with certain functions. Those, those certain functions can have its own capabilities and can do its own task, uh, de depending on what you write the function as. Then we kind of added few of the functionalities to those graphs, like uh, we added LM call, to those graphs and also we kind of added a rack call based on the output of LLM call, right? Then we also talked about how we can add uh, our agent state. So by adding the agent state, we can now add a functionality to your lang graph so that the lang graph can act as a stateful machine where the agent state can flow around different nodes and uh, within that agent state there are certain messages that are getting appended from different nodes of the graph so uh, and we can like go back to a particular um, state of message and uh, fetch those message and then use it on a particular node right so uh, so then we can we have also shown this example where you can add this state graph where you can pass this as agent state and then this uh, graph will act as kind of a state machine, right? So then after that, like we kind of uh, build this complex looking graph where the user comes with a certain question, then based on that question, we are making an LLM call to uh, kind of do a topic classification. So based on the user input, we will either classify like Japan sports and not related. Then we pass it through a new concept, which we introduced in the last video that is conditional age. So based on the data that is coming to that router or that conditional age, we can route our uh, our graph to a different part of the graphs, right? Like if the topics are related to Japan and sports, then it will do a rack call. And if the topic is really is not related to Japan and sports, then we will uh, make a LLM call to fetch a kind of generic answer, right? So this is what we discussed in our last video. So in this video, what I wanted to talk about is if you have access to a proprietary model like OpenAI, then how you can integrate a function call. So generally uh, nowadays people don't call it a function call. They we kind of call it a tool call or a tool invocation. So using uh, proprietary models like OpenAI or uh, like Claude series of models, we can integrate this tool calling. So based on that, uh, we can perform certain complex tasks using this graph. So that is our discussion point in this video. Now uh, let's get started with our content. Okay, so first, first of all, like what we are doing is we are importing chat open AI. So as I mentioned, like if you have the leverage to have a proprietary model like open AI, then you can use this functionality of uh, uh, making a tool call. So that's why we kind of need the open AI. So you, in case you don't have any proprietary model access, so what you can do is you can refer back to my last video where we are making some complex conditions through which we are calling a function with different facilities. But if in case you have uh, this proprietary models access, then you can like leverage this uh, models tool call facility, right? So first of all, I am uh, importing the chat OpenAI model. So once I have imported that, then I'm just making a model dot invoke so that I am testing if my model is working fine or not. So after that, what we will do is we will uh, we will create certain functions and then uh, uh, then we will kind of convert those function to the tool. And then what we will do is we will bind that tool to the LLM, right? So now if a certain question comes and LLM with its own intelligence, it will uh, it will come to know that I have a tool at my disposal. So in case it is that question can be answered by a tool, then I will route that question by making a, a tool call or uh, giving the user certain uh, conditions through which the user will get to know like, now we can do a tool call and uh, we can like perform, we can get a good answer for the user specific question, right? So we will see in detail like how that uh, 
things are working in this video. So first of all, like uh, I am making a dummy function. So that is multiply. So generally LLMs are very bad at doing mathematical operations. So uh, one of the uh, example, which I have also taken from Lang graph tutorial that they have used this uh, multiply as a tool. So there we kind of uh, doing a multiplication between two numbers. So it accepts two of the arguments like first number and second number. Then it's just returning the multiplication of that. Now what we are doing is we are at first converting this uh, multiply to uh, OpenAI tool. So Langchain has this facility of convert to OpenAI tool functionality, which will convert this normal Python function to uh, OpenAI tool. Then what we are doing is we are binding that tool to the model, right? So uh, then uh, what we are calling that object is like model with tools. Now the model is aware that this new tool, which is a multiplication tool that I have at my disposal. So whenever the question is related to a multiplication of two numbers, then I can give certain indications that the uh, operation can be done using a tool call, right? So uh, just to show you like how this actually is working. So first of all, like I'm making a, a invoke with this question, like what is 35 multiplied by 46, right? Then we are getting a response back from this model with tools. So if you just look closely at this response and try to analyze like what is the output of this response, then the rest of the things are very easy for you, right? So I will try to break it down like how, how this response is actually working and, and how it can give you a hint of that it needs a tool call, right? So you can see like, uh, the content is blank here, but uh, it has certain additional quirks, so which are like keyword arguments. So in that additional quirks, so you can just fetch this tool calls variable or tool calls key, I should say that is a key. So uh, we can just fetch that tool calls key and we can get, uh, if I just print those values, you can see like it has a certain ID, then it has, uh, it, it is showing that it needs to make a function call or a tool call. And the name of that function is multiply and the type is function. And also it kind of extracted the arguments, right? So the first number is 35 and the second number is 46 based on the user question that is being passed here, right? So basically this tool call is uh, doing two main tasks. So first it is deciding that it should make a, a tool call and the name of that tool is uh, this multiply. And then it's kind of extracting the arguments for that function call or the tool call, right? So the first number is 35 and the second number is 46, right? So after that, you can see like this tool calls is nothing but a type of list. So it may be the case that uh, you have added multiple tools for, and then you kind of bind those multiple tools to the LLM call. So that's why it kind of returns a list. So you need to loop through this list to kind of get these values. So what we are doing is for tool call in tool calls, we are kind of extracting the function name using this uh, dot get function, then using again a get of name then that is returning the name of the function and also we can extract the arguments right so tool call dot get function then we are extracting this arguments value so then it will return this argument values so that is actually the benefit of using uh uh, like using a proprietary model like OpenAI and then doing a tool call. So it will do the extraction of the arguments along with the name of the function, right? So then, uh, so with this understanding, like how this uh, basically this tool calling uh, is working. So I hope now you have a good understanding of how this tool calling is working. Now what we will do is we will integrate this tool calling in the Lang graph. Right. So first of all, like we will create an agent state. Now, this is the graph which uh, I am going to create now. So the user will come with a certain question. Then uh, with the binded tool with the LLM, we will uh, pass that question to the LLM call. So that will kind of decide like whether uh, it should make a tool call or not. Uh, so what we will do is we will look into this additional quirks inside our router and based on the output of that router, if the output is like tool calls, then we will 
route the uh, uh, flow in this path and if it is re returning a blank list then we will come to the end of this uh, lang graph right so let's build that so first of all like uh, I'm creating a straight graph where I'm passing the agent state, which, which will act as a stateful machine for uh, this whole graph. So then I am making this uh, invoke model where we are passing the state and we are extracting the message. And then that message we are sending to this model with tools and that output we are storing and returning as a key value pair, which we have also discussed in our last message that we should return the value in this fashion so that uh, the messages are kind of added to the agent state, right? So once that is done, then we are adding this node. So this invoke model, which I have defined here, so that we are naming as agent. Then I'm creating an invoke tool uh, function. So in that invoke tool, so first of all, what I am checking is, I am checking my additional quarks. So if the additional quarks uh, has a key value of tool calls, then it will return the value of that, else it will return a blank uh, list, right? So uh, that's what I am checking here, and I'm just uh, returning this tool call in this variable of multiply call. So if it is none, then it will uh, raise an exception, and if it is not none, then it will uh, do this tool calling. So how to do this tool calling is you kind of use this multiply dot invoke and there you need to pass the argument in the form of json right so what we are doing is we are uh, doing this multiply call dot get function dot get arguments so we will kind of fetch those arguments then we will convert those arguments to json format and then we will pass it to this uh, multiply dot invoke uh, call Right. So then we will get back this output and then we are sending that output from this invoke tool function. Right. So that we are also adding as a node where I am mentioning this as tool and uh, and adding this invoke tool as a node to this graph. Right. So then we are kind of adding uh, a connection between tool to the end. So this is uh, this connection. So tool to the end. And then what we will do is we will add a router which is similar to our previous uh, uh, previous tutorial. So there we will uh, kind of route the route the based on the output of the state message. Like if the additional quarks has a value of tool calls, then it will return multiply as a string, else it will return end, right? So then we will add a conditional edge, which is very much similar to our last video. If the string is multiplied, then we will uh, pass the message to the tool node, uh, else it will route it to the end node, right? So uh, then we are kind of compiling that graph and creating an app out of it. And we are calling this message, uh, like we are passing this message and we are calling this app.invoke, right? And we are getting this output. So now if you look, look closely to this output, you will see that uh, first of all, it's kind of, uh, this is the question which we are sending. Uh, then we are kind of getting an AI message back from this uh, agent call. And we can see the additional quarks are present here, right? So we can see that the function has certain arguments that is being extracted and also it is uh, replying the name of that function, right? So all this are being present inside this call. So then if you want to just get the output, we can, like fetch in this way the last uh, value of the message key so which is the multiplication of that number and which that is the desired output for this particular question right now if the question is kind of a generic question right like what is llm if i am passing this question then it should not make a tool call so uh, as the function is uh, or the tool is kind of binded to the llm uh, then the LLM will decide like whether you should make a tool call or not. So this is a question which does not require a tool call. So we can straight away get back this content uh, and we can like uh, get the result here, right? So, but in case of last call, we can see the content was black, but additional quirks were present, right? So then we can like um, get the particular output of this, which is like content of the AI message. And this is the output of this. 
right? So I hope you uh, got an understanding of how you can incorporate uh, tool calling using a Lang graph and also the functionalities of how a tool calling works and how you can see like whether the LLM is kind of giving you indications that there is a requirement of tool calling or not. So with this, I hope you got a good understanding of uh, this uh, kind of workflow which you can integrate using a tool calling. So with this, I will end this video. See you in the next video. Thank you.